it's such a, a, a universally appealing show. I mean, it's it's a show that that tells fairy tales over and over. And you know, we we as a culture never get tired of that. You know, it's it's uh, it's something that becomes enjoyable immediately as soon as you're old enough to understand what a story is. And it's something that never really gets old. You know, uh, no matter how how old you get. And uh, yeah, what they've done that's that's so genius and, and so cool with the show is that they've managed to to tell these these fairy tales that everybody knows but also weave in this modern day real world element to all of it um and it's just uh it's just a very special unique thing there's an aspect of it that's intimidating a little bit because i'm coming in and I'm playing a character that's existed from day one um, and a, a character that Jared Gilmore did a wonderful job with. And, and you know, I really want to pay homage to that. Um, so so it's a matter of retaining the essence uh, of, of who this character has always been, but also acknowledging the fact that he's grown up now. He's an adult. There's been a, a, a large pass, passage of time and that he's a different person now. So um, making sure that that. I bring something new and and fresh to to who this person is. It was very important to um, really immerse myself in the show and and really get a strong sense of mainly the essence of the relationships that Henry has with the people that are closest to him in his life. Emma Swan, Regina, um, you know Prince Charming, Snow White, all of those relationships. Because uh, not only are some of these relationships still um, evolving, like his relationship with Regina, his relationship with Hook, uh, the relationships informed who he is as a person, who, who he's become as an adult. So that's all hugely important. And um, that, that was very much part of the preparation for it. This is a, a job that you dream of, you know, it, it, it's so hard these days, maybe it's always been really hard, I guess, for a TV show to really catch on. You know, it's just difficult. And especially now there's so much content out there. There's so many television shows. And a lot of them, even though that they're even though they're really good, they just never quite find an audience. So to get to come in and work on a show that's been a huge success and 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 does what it does so well is, you know, you kind of feel like you hit the lottery, you know, it's uh, it's amazing. It, it comes with a lot of responsibility, but that's what you want, you know? So for it to be all those things, plus the fact that it's a real actor's job because, because you know, uh, so many characters, uh, so many actors get to come on and play various characters, various versions of the same character. In a lot of ways, I feel like uh, I get to do that as well because we see, we almost see two different versions of Henry. You know, we see in flashbacks, we're gonna see Henry, uh, not long after we we left him in season six and in the adventures that he's been on in various realms and fairy tale worlds, and then we also see the cursed version in uh, what is Hyperion Heights, uh, neighborhood of Seattle, and and that's a very different person in a lot of ways. So, you know, I get to play these two sides, um, and that's an actor's dream, really. There's a sense of en uh, enthusiasm and excitement. Uh, that that sort of pervades the the set, and it's so much fun. Like everybody, you know, sp the, all of us new cast are just really excited to be a part of such a such a great show. That there's this there's this real sense of play. You know, we all want to just get in there and and play and experiment and figure it out and just and just find you know who these characters are and and create this world um, and. They are all, you know, Gabrielle, Danya, um, you know, Makia Cox, all these, all these people who are coming in uh, are, they, everybody just seems to have this, this really great sense of play about them and this sense of exploration. And that's what you want, especially for a show like this, you know, so it's just been fun, you know, it's just been really fun.
It's the same show that it's always been. It's it's the same writers, it's the same creators. They're they're still maintaining the same spirit that the show has always had. You know, they're still working within the structure of of flashback fairy tale, you know, present day real world, playing with both of those worlds and and slowly revealing, you know, backstories and origins to these characters. It's all the same thing. And then plus we, you know, we're, uh, we we still have uh, uh, Gold and Rumpelstiltskin and uh, Regina and the, and the Evil Queen and, and Hook and you know um, these characters that that fans have loved for years. They're still very much a part of it. Um, so so the spirit of the show is still the same, uh, but we've got all of these exciting, fresh, new characters and these new stories. You know, so it's really the best of both worlds. All the previous stories uh, up to the end of season six, everybody gets a happy ending and the story, the storybook is closed. So the start of season seven, we see young Henry uh, decide that he wants to go off uh, and write his own story and try and figure out what it is that his life is supposed to be because he's 16 years old and, and you know he's been the author, he finished the book, he finished everybody's story. So he wants to go off and create a new one for himself. So then we flip into the future and we see a grown up Henry and um, it's, it's, we're going to see elements of what his life, the turn that his life has taken and he's in a different realm, a different story, storybook. So um, that's kind of where we're starting in season seven. My character is an alternate version of Captain Hook. So he's not the same Captain Hook that we, we've known before, um, which is great for, as an actor for me to, to get to play a different version of a character I know so well inside out. So it's, it's, it's brought a new challenge and uh, it's fun to, to get to do that. Uh, he is in Seattle, he's a cop. Um, and that's, we're only early in the filming process, so that's pretty much where we are at the minute. Um, the previous version of Captain Hook, we see him, um, but for the fans, they should know that he, both he and Emma have gotten their happy ending together. I play Captain Hook, so uh, I, I love um, his roguishness. He's sort of like a uh, kind of a rakish character. Um, but I've been very lucky through six seasons now of playing him to get to play so many different variations of him and, uh, you know, hero hook or bad guy hook or old fat hook and all this kind of stuff. So it's been, it's been fun to do that. Essentially, the show is about hope and uh, I think that it sort of translates so well all across the board with kids, teenagers, you know, adults you know, elderly people and stuff like that. It's a, it's, it's a show that's just primarily about, about hope and doing the right thing. And um, it's, it's a really, really good show that for, for you know, sort of covering the whole gamut of the audience and sort of, you know, uh, being attractive to, to, to everybody. My version of Cinderella, and what's great about it is because, you know, once upon a time, there's these incredible flashbacks where you get to meet the character um, and, and get to see their backstory before the, you meet them in the real world. In the real world, my name is Hacenda. And in the real world, I have a daughter uh, by the name of Lucy, who is very reminiscing of who Henry was, uh, episode one of the pilot of Once Upon a Time, just the believer, the, you know, you have to believe and there's hope and, and wanting us to, to see beyond what we think we, we are are and, and seem past those struggles. But I, and I also get to play, you know, Cinderella when she first falls in love. And when telling that story is going to be a completely different version and, and a different journey because I'm coming from a different place. I have a, I'm not a damsel in distress. And I think a lot of times when you think of Disney princesses, you think of them as um, waiting for their prince to save them. And that's not the version that I'm playing. She's badass. She's out to also find her own story and somehow meets Henry along the way. And we go in this incredible adventure together. We're falling in love. It's iconic and it's groundbreaking uh, for so many reasons. You know, growing up in, in the Dominican Republic, I never once thought like I'm going to grow up one day and be 
playing a Disney princess, let alone Cinderella, because you have these ideas of what that character has been and what she looks like. So it's been really, you know, refreshing to know that I'm, I'm doing a, a love story and a new rendition of Cinderella in my way, different struggles, different life, and coming from an edgier perspective. It's, it's exciting. What I hope that they love is that it's a new adventure. And, and I know for me, when I finish a book and I open up a new book, I'm always excited to see what journey I go on with, the, with these characters. For me, I, I try to, in, in all of my, all of the characters that I play, just keep them really grounded. Um, and that's really what I'm hoping for, that the people connect to it on a, on a more of a realistic way because of her, her strength comes from a very deep, is very deep seated and her struggles have made her the, the girl that, she's, that she is when you first meet her in fairy tale world, but also the woman and the mother that she has become later on. So there's a lot to look forward uh, to. And, and I think that's what I, I, want, I want to tell the most. I think always, uh, a story of struggle is always more inspiring than a, than a story of, you know, I'm already, I already found my prince. It's exciting. I'm, I was excited when I, when I found out that I got the job. What's really great is that I went into audition to, for the testing process. I didn't know that I was auditioning for Cinderella. They told me, just come in for a character and we just want to see if you have chemistry with um, Andrew West, who's playing um, the older version of Henry. So I walked in very much like, bringing my own thing to it and that's what made it really you know exciting for me and I also coming into a show that's, that's been has such a su success I, I've had that happen so many other times in my career like I went into Sopranos the last you know the last se seasons of, of Sopranos I went into Buffy the Vampire Slayer was my first you know recurring role as an actress when I first came to LA. I think I'm used to walking into an environment that's been set up what's great is that I walk into everything with a very open mind and very fresh and I was able to connect with the characters, the, the people that are playing the characters that have been there before and they've been such great mentors for me in this new journey and the fans are so amazing. So I'm just excited for them to watch. Believe and hope. I, I, there, there's not, there aren't that many shows nowadays that really are centered around this, the, the idea of a fairy tale, the wanting a happy ending. And I think in our lives, life is hard on an everyday basis. So it, it's great to tune in and feel like you can, you know, check out of your life and walk into this fairy tale world and really almost see yourself within these people and 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 find your own journey to your own happy ending. And I think that's why people tune in. That's why I tuned in. Joining something that's so well established could have been very tricky. I mean, it's no matter what line of work you're in, if you're coming in as the new person and trying to sort of navigate your way through something that's been so um, grandfathered, uh, it actually could have been very tricky, but it's been, we've been welcomed with open arms. I think that the original cast that, that remains is um, really pleased to have some new energy, some new life. So I think that they are quite um, pleased to have this sort of rejuvenation for the show. And I've certainly been treated with um, uh, tremendous grace being new on the set. I think it's probably quite difficult for the, the hardcore um, viewers who have been so, um, so involved and so invested in these stories and these characters from day one. I think it's hard to accept that there's a, a whole new storybook opening. Um, but I think if they're the true believers that they say they are, that they have to have faith in the storytellers of the show. They're not going to lead them astray. They're going to lead them further deeper into the journey that they've already invested in. It's been an absolute pleasure to, to get to know Dan, Dania. She is, uh, she's got a lot of life and energy. Um, she's a very passionate woman. Um, and I think she feels really incredibly genuinely excited to play this role of Cinderella because it's such an unusual coupling of her ethnic, her ethnicity and this traditionally very Caucasian, um, very sort of white bread character. I think it's for her a real triumph. And I, and I really celebrate that with her. 
What I love most about Once Upon a Time is that my 13-year-old and my 23-year-old daughters both watch it as avidly as each other. So that just goes to show you that um, as a contemporary piece of, of fiction on our televisions, that it speaks to two different generations, to women, to young girls, and that there's, um, that there's hope for all types of people, genders, uh, denominations, uh, ethnic cultures. It's, it's just this open door for exploration into fantasy. I'm sure the fans want Regina to have her happy ending, as do I. Um, but in season seven, we will see Regina in flashbacks. And now we're in Hyperion Heights, which is, takes place in Seattle. And um, it's a very different world. And everyone's very different. And um, I look very different. I have like curly hair. I went from pantsuits to jeans and t-shirts. And I'm a bar owner. And I'm pretty down to earth, a bit more rugged. It's cool. It's like a different character. I think that they're going to love our new cast. We have, you know, obviously there are some of us that have stayed, some of us that have left. Um, I think those characters will be missed, but we do have some appearances. So we have Jennifer Morrison coming back for an episode. We have Jared Gilmore coming back for some episodes. We have maybe some other guests returning, so we'll see. I don't want to spoil anything. But um, I, one thing I've noticed with our fan base is they are so open to the changes. And we've had such positive feedback from our fans with this new season, even though we have these big changes, they seem on board. They're like, we wanna, we wanna see what you guys are gonna do for the seventh season. We wanna see what happens with Hook. We wanna see what happens with Mr. Gold. We wanna see what happens with Regina, if she's ever gonna get our happy ending. So, you know, I, I think the fans are really going to love the new cast as well. They're really talented, they're awesome, they're tons of fun, um, easy to work with and, they bring a lot, um, like a lot of uh, heart and realism in a different way. Danya has like this real like groundedness and this like uh, wisdom and this heart and, and she cares so much and you can see it and I love that about her. Andrew reminds me so much of Jared. It's kind of odd how similar they are, and yet they're different people, but he's playing Henry. And he and I have really bonded, and we're you know, still developing that mother-son relationship. Um, and Gabrielle's great. I mean, she's just a ton of fun. We haven't worked a lot together, but we're still getting to know each other, but I really love her. I love the whole family dynamic. I like the fight. I like how we all have each other's backs. I like that we are sending out a positive message in the world and that during a time where there's so much negativity. I feel like people can tune into Once Upon a Time and get lost and just enjoy it and sit back and just watch good television. And um, I love it. I love it because as an actor, it gives me the opportunity to play so many different versions of my character. I've played now eight versions of this character. So on an actor level, it's like a dream come true. What's not to love? She's extremely complex, multi-layered. She's a mother, she's a strong woman, she has a huge heart, she's temperamental. I mean, she's everything and um, I love, I love that I've been able to do so much with her over the years. I love that the writers have given me so much to play with over the years. She is one of my favorite characters I've ever played. We are picking up with, uh, you know, we saw our little kid Henry is now grown up and he finds himself in Seattle under a new curse. And uh, we know that some of his families come to help him. We see Rumpelstiltskin, we see Captain Hook, and we see Regina. And so for us, we really wanted to, you know, after six seasons, give some of our characters like Snow and Charming and 
their happy ending, but we feel like it's time to, we've, although we've ended the chapter of that book, it's time to begin a new one. Yeah, season seven is the start of a new chapter. Some, some of the characters return, some new ones join us. We begin a new adventure. When we knew Henry as uh, uh, a little boy, he had the heart of the truest believer, and now he no longer believes. And so it's up to his 10-year-old daughter, Lucy, to get him to return that belief, and what she believes will break this curse. And so I think you find Henry is now a writer. He wrote a book that contained all the stories of the first six seasons, but he believes they're not real. He believes he just made them up. And he uh, now drives a car. He is a swift driver, which is the clearable Uber. And uh, Henry is trying to make it in this world. And I think, you know, the reason, the very first um, season we were on the Snow White mythology, and I think people will see we're on the Cinderella mythology, which really works in the real world. I think a lot of people feel like they're kept down and they can't get ahead and they are struggling and they need hope. And that is why, you know, for us, we wanted to do a new version of the show in the modern day to reflect the times we're in. We're bringing in um, a whole bunch of new cast this year, among them um, Danya Ramirez, who's playing Cinderella, and she's amazing, and she's got a whole new take on the character, and we have some surprising twists and turns to the Cinderella story. Yeah, we're going to meet her wicked stepmom, played by Gabrielle Lenoir, uh, who is very extra evil. We are going to meet uh, the wicked stepdaughter, who is played by Adelaide Kane. Um, and we're going to meet some new princesses that we never got to. We're going to uh, meet Makia Cox, who's playing Tiana. Um, we're also going to have Alice in Wonderland, played by Rose Reynolds. Everybody loves the idea of, you know, hope. And I think that no matter how dark our stories get, you know, everyone knows that at the end of the day, there's going to be light at the tunnel. And, and I think that's what keeps people coming. I think that no matter where you're from, no matter who you are and how you grew up, fairy tales are a part of your life. And I think everybody connects to them in different ways. And that's something that I think the show may have tapped into. And, uh, you know, and now in this, uh, this new iteration of the show, we'll be exploring some new fairy tales and retelling some old ones. When we started seven years ago, we started the pilot at the end of the Snow White story to say that we weren't just retelling what you've seen, we're going to tell our own versions. And for us, that was kind of the fun about it. You know, there was a lot of mysteries to us. Why is Grumpy Grumpy? Why is the Wicked Stepsister Wicked? And so we wanted to show that got underneath and, and took these characters that a lot of people just only remember from the cartoon or a toy and make them real people. You know, for us, it's not about happy endings. It's about happy beginnings. And that's that's something that uh, makes it exciting as storytellers and hopefully for the audience that stories that you, you think you know how they end could go on in a whole new direction and you can take these characters and hopefully make them dimensional and real and give them some surprising twists and really find the humanity within them all.